Good morning. Today is the second day of our acrylic animals. We're going to be using one of the backgrounds that we made inspired by Gerard Richter using the scrapers and I'm going to be painting this adorable panda. So let's get started. You'll want to open up your sketchbook to a nice clean page or a page that you've already used as just um, to protect the table. So we're going to transfer our cute little panda onto our painted background. We're going to start by taking a plastic bag and just cutting off the seal top. And opening it up and just cutting down the sides and the bottom so that we separate the front and back sides. We're just going to use one of these for the transfer so we can save the other side for another day. And we're going to take this plastic and put it over our cute little panda. We're going to take a marker that is an oil-based marker, shake it, Prime it and make sure that it's really flowing so you can hold it down. You see that little puddle? That's kind of what we're trying to get. Now we're just going to trace our panda. And if the outer edge of the shape that we're tracing is furry, then I like to give an irregular edge instead of a smooth edge. The profile line of an object really helps us to understand the texture and the material of that. Now on the inside of his eyes, that dark area is kind of smooth and then the outside is more furry. So I'm going to do kind of smooth on the inside and then an irregular jagged shape on the outside. Prime very often. I'm gonna go ahead and get the eye in there. And then the nose. And maybe little dots for the top of his nose. And maybe for the way that his um, top jaw is coming out is kind of his snout kind of comes up like that and then this mouth is probably the most challenging part i think so we're going to trace those teeth and then where his mouth is open and then his chin And maybe where the white changes to black, right along the bottom of his mouth. And then jiggity jag lines, where his fur is nice and soft on the outside. And then over here. And since he has a little bit of white on his chest, we can indicate that. Now I'm going to take this and slip out my reference image, put that to the side, take my painting and flip this over and lay it down. Try to lay it down without moving it around too much. I'm not doing a very good job of that. And then press it down. Now, when we did our little practice with the smiley face, the smiley face was very small, and so it didn't take very long to draw, and it didn't take any time at all for uh, us to transfer it. So it transferred pretty easily. In this case, um, I had quite a bit to draw, 
So there's going to be quite a bit that actually dried before we actually did the transfer technique. Knowing that that's the case, I'm going to take some tape before I even lift this up to see how much transferred. I'm going to attach my transfer plastic to my painting and my painting to my sketchbook. I'm gonna get a strip of paint and you could just decide like which side is best. It might be the top, it might be the bottom, or it might be the sides. But look for a spot where your plastic is overlaying your uh, painting, but you still have, you can see some of that painting. So then you can take your um, tape and tape down all three things, sketchbook and uh, painting and plastic all in one. So now you can kind of fold this back and I can see some of these lines transferred very well and some of them didn't transfer at all. And that's okay because I'm going to take a few minutes and make sure that anything that didn't transfer gets transferred. So the last few things that I drew, like his mouth for instance, transferred pretty well. But this whole area around his eyes didn't, his whole head didn't, his ears didn't. So I'm just going to pick uh, small areas, add more of the ink from the marker, and then transfer small areas at a time. So this shape around this eye did not transfer, so I'm just going to redo that. And then uh, fold down from my tape, press it onto the back of my painting and then transfer each shape that didn't transfer. And the reason that my tape is helpful is because um, I know that everything will be aligned just perfect. Okay. I can see that his ears didn't transfer, so I'm going to go ahead and do my jiggity jag lines. For his jiggity jag fur. Lift that up. Go ahead and continue down and around. Just transferring small areas at a time so that they don't have enough time to um, dry. Okay, so I'm going to come back here and get this part of his head, his ear, And it, his mouth is pretty good, but because it's the most complicated shape, I'm just going to go over it again and make sure that all of these little individual teeth transfer just to help me out with the hardest shape. Okay. That's great. Uh, take a minute to really check um, and make sure that you're happy with everything that's transferred. And then when you are, then you can pick up your transfer paper and your tape and put them to the side. Now, the original panda picture that we were looking at, the panda was facing this way. And when we traced it, we traced it and then flipped it over. And so our, our panda is facing the opposite direction. 
So make sure that you get from Miss Thomas the second photocopy of your animal facing the same direction as your painting. It's going to make it a lot easier for you to use as a reference image if your animal um, picture is facing the same direction as your project. So I'm going to start by taking my Sharpie and enhancing the um, transferred gold. So I'm going to come up here now on the outside of that transferred gold. I'm just going to take this Sharpie. It's going to help me get um, some more defined edges. But again, if it's a furry edge versus if it's a smooth edge, it helps to have your line represent the texture and the quality of that edge. I just keep looking back here to make sure that I am getting a, a similar line quality to what I see. If this is like really fluffy right here, and then around his mouth where it's super smooth, straight line, and then get his teeth in there. Do you hear my dog snoring in the background? This is the fur edge here. This is the smooth edge here. This is another smooth edge. So I'm looking back at my reference image just about every two seconds. The more that you use that reference image to compare where yours is and where it's going, the more that it's going to resemble your original reference. Okay, this is where his mouth comes up. And then this is kind of that dark black area. And then this is between the white and the dark and it's kind of really fluffy here. And give an opportunity to do that as well. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do his eyes with my Sharpie because I have more control with my Sharpie than I do. And this is kind of like big, tall, semicircle, and then a more shallow one down here. I'm gonna go ahead and color in. It's really pretty black, so I'm gonna color in, not all of it, but if I see just a little bit of a highlight right here, then I'm going to leave that not colored in. That already looks a bit like a bear. Love it. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do the fun part. So get your palette. Now, I really like the purple in the background, and I think I'm going to play off of that, so I'm going to stick with um, purples and reds and blues for my panda. If you want, you could make yours realistic colors, so that's black and white, but look in here, this all of his head isn't the same um, amount of white. This is very, very light white. This is really bluish. Down here is a little bit reddish and certainly darker than up here. So 
Um, it's less important that you use perfect color choices and more important that you um, get the values or the lights and darks um, in the right place. I'm going to go ahead and put in a little bit of black in one of my wells, but I'm going to keep it separated because it's so strong it tends to mess up stuff pretty easily. And then I'm gonna get my white for tinting. And you can put the white in one of your side wells and just use this for mixing, that would be fine too. And then I'm going to go ahead and tint some of my red. So it's kind of pinkish, tint some of my blue. Um, I mixed some red and blue, so it's purpley. And if I add some white to that, then that'll tint the purple. Out here, it kind of makes a same grouping of colors, but a little bit more white, it looks like, so slightly lighter medium and then maybe a darker version it really is a good idea to kind of like use your paper towel and wipe off your um, stir stick in between but I'm just I'm kind of a messy painter so you know you do you Now you should have a large, medium, and small brush. Keep in mind that for large shapes, you're going to use your large brush, medium shapes, medium brush, and small brush, your small, sh small shapes, your small brush. I'm going to be using my small and my medium brush for this painting. And I think I also need to have some bright white as a color choice. Ooh a bit too much. Now all you're going to do is put light colors where the light colors are on your reference image and dark colors where your dark colors are on your reference image. If you wanted to make this panda a green panda, you totally could. That would actually be very cool. I think that would be amazing. Um, I'm just going to play off of the background colors. It does not have to be realistic. You could make him a red panda. That would be cool too with light, medium, and dark uh, shades of red. So it's your project and you get to decide. So I'm starting by looking at where my lightest um, whites are. And they're all up here, kind of around his face. Depending on the direction, before I do this, ooh, just kidding. All right, so now we can paint. So um, I'm just going to keep in mind that I'm putting light paint where the light is on him um, and really look critically like this is white, but it's actually a middle color blue. Um, you can use blue, you can use green, you can use whatever, but you just wanna make sure that um, the lightness um, works. So this is the lightest area up here and you can take your brush and in your sketchbook, just pick up any color at all. And just notice that you can take your brush and make it flat and put, make big areas of color. Or you can turn the brush and then get thin areas of color. And especially when you're doing something that's kind of like furry then that gives you a nice edge that looks more furry. So with my white that's up here, I'm going to kind of um, do a combination where my edge, I'm going to turn my brush on its side and then flatten it out so that the profile is kind of that furry, that little furry. He is so cute. Okay, 
and then that comes in and around his eye. I'm taking more of that white. I keep looking back. If it's flat over here, then it's flat. And then if it's kind of um, fluffy on this edge, then I'm doing my fluffy. Something like that. Doing my fluffy edges. This is really fluffy around here. And coming around on this side. So I just keep looking back and forth for every time that I stop and I point, I probably have looked back and forth like five or six or 10 times. Bring this white down. I notice that this is really bright light. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that in there. Right along. Here. Now what you don't want to do, you don't want to paint over your Sharpie because if you lose that line, then it'll be hard for you to know where the shapes are. Okay, and this seems to come around here. Be very light in here. Now this is also part of his white fur, but because of the way that the sun is hitting it, it looks, um, it's not nearly as, um, as white. So I'm going to mix a blue that is tinted quite a bit. And then I'm going to use that The more that you can pay attention to the different uh, amounts of light and dark, then the more realistic it's going to look. Okay, so I see like this is coming up around here. It's kind of around his eyes too. It's definitely like there's this little upside down triangle here that's this lighter value, not quite white. And all around here. Might even be a little bit darker over here. And then it stops down here, right at his ears. Seems to be a little bit more. Okay, and then all of this tends to be this lighter fur. Down here as well. And then this shape in here is darker yet. 